Tel Aviv. Well, back here at home, two South Texas landmarks that played a key role in helping slaves go south to Mexico, where slavery was illegal, have received a national designation. Jackson Ranch Church and Martin Jackson Cemetery in San Juan, Texas, are now on the National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom. Now, this is all part of Sandra Sanchez's latest story on Border Report. She joins us now to tell us more. Thank you so much for being here, Sandra. Thanks for having me. So these are really historic areas in the Rio Grande Valley. Walk us through how they help slaves get to freedom. And I read a piece, a quote in your uh, story saying that historians estimate about tens of thousands of slaves were held. Exactly. You know, this is a fascinating story and one that probably a lot of people aren't aware of because while many slaves went north to freedom, there were several, you know, upwards of 10,000 that, that received help and actually went south across the Rio Grande here from South Texas to Mexico, which in 1829 had abolished slavery. And so they sought their freedom there. Um, this is the story about Nathaniel Hicks, um, I'm sorry, Nathaniel Jackson, whose common law wife was Matilda Hick. And he was the son of a plantation owner in the Southeast. And when his father purchased Matilda, they were both children and uh, historians uh, records say they fell in love. She became his common law wife and they moved um, across the country with five covered wagons um, and they were bound for Matamoros, Mexico. But for whatever reason, they stopped in South Texas on the banks of the Rio Grande in what is now San Juan, Texas. And he founded a church, he had 5,000 acres, and he used this land and this position and this church to help funnel slaves across the river um, under the cover of darkness. They had boats, they had an entire network, and they helped, like you said, upwards of 10,000 slaves for decades. And they just stayed in South Texas. They actually never went to Mexico because I think they found their calling. And what was so fascinating is you actually spoke to one of his descendants. What did he have to say about this designation? I spoke to his great, 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 great grandson. That's four greats of Nathaniel Jackson. This is Pablo Villarreal. He's Dago County tax assessor collector, and he's been an elected official for 11 years here. And he's very proud of what his ancestors accomplished. And he wants more information to be known. And he's really hoping that this National Park Service recognition will actually bring national, international attention to what occurred here. His family weren't the only ones who were helping people. There were a network of families that actually came from the Southeast and, um, and set up this underground railroad. And you know, what's really interesting is historians who have tracked this said that for decades, this was something that was not spoken about. And so there were actually, there was information lost among the generations, but Mr. Villarreal is among those who really wants this to get out and revived and as much information as possible, um, you know, to be known so that, that everyone can learn from what they did. And Sandra, speaking about that information that was lost, is that the reason that the designation, that rec recognition for these sites just came now? Well, it was actually a UTRGV professor who was instrumental in putting in the information uh, application um, and helped to actually assemble all this. So I think that's part of why it took some time. But, you know, this this was one of 19 sites that were actually named um, by the National Park Service in this latest tranche. And it was uh, nine other states that included, that had underground network freedom to safety sites. But this area was one of only two in Texas, the other being in, in uh, San Antonio in the San Juan Mission. I just wanted to kind of paint a picture there was a chapel that he operated. It has a cemetery behind it with some of Nathaniel's descendants. And then Pablo's great, 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 great grandfather, Nathaniel, is actually buried a block away in what's called the Eli Jackson Cemetery. And, um, and that's where also his grand, great grandfather is buried. And so, you know, with owning all this land and, um, you know, this is all the area that they operated, it's, it's just fascinating. All right, Sandra Sanchez, as always, it's good to see you. Thank you so much. Your full report on borderreport.com. Thank you. Coming up, tornadoes and